there's still more people gathered in the crowd, Jesus said to them, This generation is an evil generation. It seeks a sign, but no sign will be given it except the sign of Jonah. Just as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, so would the Son of Man be to this generation at the judgment. The Queen of the South will rise with the men of this generation, and she will condemn them. Because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And there is something greater than Solomon here. At the judgment of the men of Nineveh will arise with this generation and condemn them. Because at the preaching of Jonah they repent and there is something greater than Jonah here. The Gospel of the Lord. Why was the generation perverse as Jesus accused them? Perversion consists not only in evil. He could have said, It is an evil generation, but in the transformation of something to be used for purpose, contrary to that for which I was conceived, for which I was created. That generation would have to think if it was also ours, was perverse, because he asked for one more sign, no one more miracle. One more miracle, one more proof. Those miracles that the Lord performed, so many, were not used. Some even turned them against Him, reproaching Him that if He performed them, it was because the devil was with Him. That was the perversion. Those people did not trust Christ, in spite of His wonderful teachings, and in spite of the extraordinary acts He did. They asked again and again and again, for a new sign, a new miracle. And what about us? Are we perverse generation when we are not willing to trust Jesus and believe in Jesus? We are a perverse generation when we are continually asking for a new miracle to believe in God or to believe in God's love. What good has all the above done? What good has have God's extraordinary intervention in our own lives done, many of which only we ourselves know have existed. That is the perversion. What do we have to do? What miracles has God done? What proofs has He given us of His love for us? Those proofs, those miracles, those details are the ones that have to forfeit the support, sustain our, our faith. It is not fair it is a perversion. It is an offensive to doubt or to demand a new proof, a new miracle. Faith in God's love is obligatory. Faith that God loved us is an obligation for us. Not to have that faith, to doubt God's love is a sin because we have proof of His love. Christ Himself gave the greatest proof with His resurrection. There is no greater proof than that. But of course, being unbeatable, it is not the only one. It is offensive to God to demand proof from Him in order to trust in Him, because He was already done more than He should have done. That is why trusting God, even in the moments of greatness, darkness, is an obligation for us. It is an act of justice towards God. It is a proof of gratitude. In those moments, when we don't know what is going to happen to us, to our loved ones, to our country. In those moments, we have to tell Him as an act of justice, quote, Lord, I trust in You. I don't understand, and I would like to understand. I don't see clearly, and I would like to see it. But I, Lord, I trust in You, and You have to write for me to trust in You. You have to write for me to abandon myself in Your hands. You have the right for me not to doubt Your love. Whatever their circumstances, they strike me, many may be. Let us give God our trust, our faith, because He has earned it, not only by creating us or dying on the cross, but by resurrecting for us. Amen. <music>